Do you want to meet the Master today? Then let's get ready to stand to our feet. Let's welcome Him in this place because I'm going to tell you something. We have an opportunity to touch heaven and heaven come down and meet us where we are. Do you know what? In the old days, in the law of Moses, there was a tabernacle, right? The high priest had to go offer a sin offering for all the people once a year. But guess what? Jesus came. He done away with the old way. He gave us a new path, a new way. He is the high priest, and his blood, look at your neighbor and say, have you applied the blood this morning? Did you apply the blood? Because let me tell you something, when that blood's applied, you can enter into the true place of worship to the Holy of Holies because he said the curtain was pulled back, it was torn, the veil was ripped, and now his blood is on you. God sees Jesus in you. And if you don't apply the blood, you can't enter in. Apply the blood this morning. If you don't have that blood applied, today's a good day. Let's join in worship. Let's get ready. Come on. Because the I am tells me who I am. 
Aren't you glad you know how the story ends? Well, welcome, October 27th, 2024. Welcome to Rio East, Sunday morning service. Glad to have you all with us. If you happen to be a visitor with us, we have visitor cards in the back of the pew, and we would absolutely love it if you could fill that out so we could have a record of your attendance. Uh, but we're going to get into tithing and offering. Um, and y'all remember that Burger King slogan, have it your way? We really like to have it our way, don't we? I know I like to have it my way, right? And what happens when we don't get it our way? We, we pout, we whine, we get frustrated, we get mad, we get angry. Um, but we do, we like to have it our way, and when things don't go our way, in our minds, it's not good. Isaiah 55, 9 says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God's ways are better than our ways. So, I got this little devotional here I want to read to you. And it says, When we approach God solely as the giver of gifts and the provider of solutions to our problems as we perceive them, we are trying to turn him into a cosmic vending machine. We want him to give us exactly what we ask for. How many times do we do that? God does not need more of our perspective. We need more of his. When we aren't in ignoring, when we aren't ignoring him, we spend so much time trying to explain ourselves to God, making a pitch for the longings of our flesh to be justified. The problem is we do not really know what we ask for. We need to ask Him for what we ought to ask for. God does not exist to hear from us and provide resources so we might have our way. He exists so we might hear from Him and be resourced to participate in His way. To participate That's where I want to stop. To participate in His way. We need to participate in His way. Because our ways just don't work. Our ways get us into trouble. Our ways cause trouble and problem for us, for others. But when we start to participate in God's ways is when our lives will absolutely just flourish. Right? Because our perspective is we got to have this, got to have that. It's got to be this way, that way. Like when I go to work, and things don't go the way I want them to go, I'm not a real happy boss, okay? i just be honest with you. But then sometimes I realize that some other people have better ideas than what I have and that their way works better than my way. Well, guess what? God's way always works better than our way. Every single time. Every time. So when we put that in perspective with our offerings, when we get a hold of tithing and doing it God's way, man, God's going to get a hold of us and bless us in ways we could never imagine because he's looking for us to trust him, not trust the world, not trust our bank account, but to trust him and his ways. So this morning, as we get ready to bring our tithing and our offering forward, let me just say trust in God and his ways. They always work out better than our ways. And I want to leave it at that. They're going to play some music. Please, please, please bring your tithes, your offerings forward. Put it in this box. You can see this awesome engraving that Tom did. It looks awesome, Tom. Um, it's got Malachi 3.10 on it. Um, but on your way back to your seats, tell all the awesome people that are here this morning how much you love them and you're glad to see them.
All right, if everybody could make your way back to your seats, please. Like herding cattle, just kidding. Pastor can't find a seat. I'm Now that y'all are comfortable, will y'all go ahead and stand up for me? It's my favorite time. All right, if everybody will point your hands this way, we will bless this offering. Father, this morning we just come to you and thank you for all that you do for us, God. You're an amazing God, and we just thank you and praise you, God. We ask that you would do great and mighty things with this offering, God, that you would anoint it, send it out to your kingdom, God, and just multiply it. Use it to places that God, that none of us will ever see, God, but you, your kingdom is going to be built there, Lord. We, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you for the opportunity just to be here this morning, God. We praise you and thank you, God, for the word that's fixing to happen. We ask, Father, that you would just use it, Father God, to help people understand who you are, God. We pray for this praise team that you would continue to usher in the spirit through them. We love you so much, God. We praise you and thank you. In your name, amen. All right, now y'all can put your seatbelts on, sit down for a minute, because I got to some stuff I need to talk to you about. So first thing is, if you are a veteran, there's a sign-up sheet on the welcome uh, entrance out there that we need you to sign up. Where the welcome center is, we need all veterans to sign up there, please. Okay. Next is on Wednesday, we're having trunk or treat, so no service. But if you're participating in Trunk or Treat, we're doing that. And if you would just like to come and hang out and, and help just love on people, you are more than welcome to come and join us. Um, so Trunk or Treat, uh, it is from 6 to uh, 8.30. Uh, don't forget our fall festival is uh, November 2nd from 10 to 2. Right, we got vendors coming, lots of great things happening there. Um, and I'll cover the rest of these just real quick. Uh, November 10th, Veterans uh, Charity Bake Sale. November 15th, we got two things at 6.30, the youth flannels and fire, and fire. And then the young adults, Friendsgiving, both of those start at 6.30. And then don't forget, November 17th, what starts November 17th? All right, so I hope more than three of you can show up for revival. What's coming November 17th? November 17th, the more times you say it, the more it gets in your brain. So, all right, last thing I want to say is wreaths across America, $17 per wreath. Per wreath. If you would like that, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. If you could sign up by 1110 if you want to donate to that. Pastor, it's all you. Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. Man, it's good to see you guys this morning. I don't know where y'all were last week. Missed you. Missed you very much. But we had a great time. Just wanted to tell the church thank you so much for letting Teresa and I get away a little bit. And she's back in the back still working on greeting. But just wanted to say that we have been married. We celebrate our wedding anniversary in October every year. And we try to take a little time off during that time. And we've been married 40 eight years, and that's how we did it, <laughs> with, with the help of the Lord and with being able to take off just a little bit most every year, we, we have uh, gotten closer to each other every year, and we're headed toward 50 with all kinds of steam. We're looking forward to what God is doing and excited about it. Two things I want to mention, and then we'll go on with the service. Please remember Wednesday night this week, if you attend on Wednesday night, please don't stay home. Please come out to church. Just because we're not having scheduled service in the sanctuary on Wednesday night and the kids are not having classes, we're going to have a big blow-up out here in the parking lot. Not, not a blow-up you slide down, but a big blow-out, maybe I should say. we got a DJ here. You're going to do it, right? Yeah, he's on the spot. So we're going to have music out on the uh, sidewalk. We're going to have chairs out there. And for, if you're not participating in the trunk or treat, then come and let us just show fellowship to the neighborhood. Uh, I think that the last 
the last time we had the kids coming through here, somebody counted and it was up close to a thousand kids that came through this parking lot. So uh, I know a lot of you are doing the trunk and treat, which is wonderful. Your names are signed up out there. And if you're not involved in that and want to be, you can still get involved. Just decorate the trunk of your vehicle, or you don't even have to decorate it, but just have candy in it and throw it at somebody as they come by if you want to. But we just have a great time, and we're looking forward to everybody coming, especially the folks that are my age and a little older. If you guys would come and just be on the sidewalk, and let's just shout out to everybody that's coming by and show neighborly appreciation. That would be awesome. Last thing I want to mention, this coming Sunday, say it with me, this coming Sunday, we're going to be doing a new members class, and that's at 9.30 a.m. That'll be up in our conference room. If anyone's interested in joining the church or just knowing more about the church, we would love for you to be here. We go through primarily our church doctrine, what we teach, how we do business. We go through that, and if you're interested in knowing more about the church, we don't uh, require you to join the church to go through the class, but to join the church, you have to go through the class. I know that sounds kind of muddled up there, but that's the way it is. We don't want you signing up for something you don't know what you're getting into. So we love you all. It's so good to be back. I'm looking forward. Uh, we had to come back and rest after vacation. Anybody ever done that? So Tim, Tim's preaching again this morning. And I'm so, aren't y'all thankful for Tim and Jen and the boys? Let's give them a hand. They're a great blessing. Hallelujah. And I'm appreciating all these new faces that we're seeing. Thank you guys for being here. We love you very much. There's some beautiful young lady that got put on the spot. Tim, you, did you do that last week? Did you put somebody on the spot? That was amazing. This young lady, little Morton lady back over here, I forgot her name, but I really appreciate you obeying the Lord. That sounded great. We were in the mountains in Georgia, and we were listening to Facebook, and I thought, hallelujah, that is awesome. Great message. Love you guys. Enjoy the presence of the Lord. Let's stand up this morning and enjoy this. If you're a worshiper, I ask that you come forward, join us in worship. You know, I've got a little analogy that came to my mind this morning. However, how many of you have ever heard like a moth to a flame? Right? That old saying? I got to thinking about it and looking at it. Do you know why a moth is drawn to a flame? It's looking for guidance. It's looking for direction. And just like our lives, if we let our light, our fire burn bright, the Lord said, if I be lifted up, I'll what? Draw all men near. I'm not, I'm not a moth this morning, but I want to be like one because I want to have a fire so bright that others want to be drawn to it. And they look for guidance. They look for light. And oftentimes people in our past, they're looking for something. They're looking for purpose. They're looking for direction. And if our light will shine, if our fire will build, if we'll reach heaven right now, if we'll go into the heavenly of heavenlies, oh, man, imagine what God can do. So let's get off our butts this morning, if I may say that, and let's have fun. Let's enter his presence. Let's ask him, Father, come down. God, stir up the gift that's within us, the flame. Let it shine brighter than it's ever been. God, let it come down at 1601 East Broadway Avenue at Rio East Church. Let it start here. Let it start now. And God, I pray that you would quench our thirst. I pray that you would just pour out your presence this morning, Holy Ghost. Have your way. Have your way. Oh, the precious Son of God in all His innocence. You're walking dirt with you and me. He loves this church. He knows what living is. He's acquainted with our grief. A man of sorrow, sorrow, suffering. Oh, blood and tears, how can it be? 
There's a God who eats. There's a God who bleeds. Oh, praise the one who would reach for me. Hallelujah to the Son of suffering. Some imagine you are distant and Listen, but you chase us down in merciful pursuit. Don't you feel blessed? To the sin you were graced and the broken. Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your blood. 
for blood and tears How can it be There's a God who is There's a God who bleeds Oh, praise the one Who would reach for me Hallelujah To the Son of Suffering Hallelujah To the Son of Suffering All praise King Jesus All praise King Jesus All praise King Jesus Glory to God in heaven, all praise, King Jesus, all praise, come on, King Jesus, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God forever, all praise, come on, King Jesus, all of this service. Pour out your spirit. Thank you for pouring out your blood. God, we worship you. We thank you that you see your son Jesus and not our failures and our faults. So God, go before us. Prepare the way. Let our lights shine. Of 
the glory. Oh 
Thank you for taking our place and paying the price that it took so that we could be free, so that we could be chosen, so that we could be yours. We honor you. 
Father God, I thank you, Lord, that your anointing's upon him. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you anoint him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Lord, and everywhere in between. Lord, let that word spring forth and fall on good ground today. Have your way in this service. Have your complete and total way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. instruments. Everybody stand back up in here for just a second. How many of y'all have heard that that song, This Little Light of Mine? I'm going to let it shine. If we can sit here and we can sing about how worthy He is of it all and the goodness of God, then what can we do as being the ones that He has called out? We can let this little light of mine shine. You know, Alf was sitting there Unless he went up there and, uh, and found out what I sent in to the media about what I was preaching about, I didn't tell him what I was preaching about, but I thought that he was going to start preaching my message because the title of my message is Let Your Light Shine Bright Everywhere You Go. And as he started talking about the light and the moth being attracted to it, I got to thinking about a light. A light, every, everything, I, I've never been to a place where the darkness has overtaken the light. I've been in the mountains so deep back there that you can't see no street lights or you can't see anything else coon hunting. But all it takes is one light to come on and the darkness cannot overtake that light. So I don't know where you're at today or how you're living. You know, we got this thing coming up that pastor was talking about Wednesday night. It's called Light Up the Night. I hear all this stuff about how churches shouldn't participate in this. Churches shouldn't do that. Churches shouldn't do this. But God called me to be a light in a dark world. God, God called me to let my light shine. So I don't know about you or what you are going to participate in. But while I'm on this premises Wednesday evening, then we're going to glorify God. There's going to be some people that set up to hand out candy to the children that's going to glorify God. If you come up on this place, there's not going to be no darkness at this place. We're going to glorify God. So, so if you get caught up in all this natural stuff in your mind, then you probably need to quit going to Walmart. You probably need to quit going to the restaurant that's got a bar in it. You probably need to quit going and shopping at all these places if you don't want to be a part of this stuff because that's the world that we live in but what God called me to do is let my light so surely shine and there ain't no devil in hell that's going to blow out my light so if we can come together as one body and one accord with one mind with one purpose to seek after the face of God to let our light so surely shine everywhere we go that's how you change the world. Then you ain't got to worry about Halloween being all about darkness because they'll say, hey, did you see over there? This was a holiday that was supposed to be this way or whatever you want to call it, but them people shine. I want to be them people that shine. So as they sing this song, everybody sing it. This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. 
until just now you heard me but what they did they turned on the light they turned on the light I got over there with Billy earlier and I tur- he said what's that and I turned on the light and I blinded him he said all that I can see now is the light so what if we illuminate and get it walk in such a posture that we turn on the light And that all that someone, whenever they see us, all they can see from that point on is the light that we turn on. What if we live with a heart posture that that I'm going to live and I'm going to be a light. That no matter what kind of darkness comes my way, I'm going to be a light. Because the Lord has laid a scripture on my heart. I I I knew that I was preaching today for for weeks here and, and and I'm always praying and reading and God, what do you want me to preach on? And as, as, as the time drew closer, I'm listening. I'm studying. I'm in my word. And there's nothing coming. All right, God, or what service going to be like tomorrow then? Is, is it just going to be an be a altar service? We just going to have worship? Because I refuse to stand up and proclaim anything that he hadn't gave me. I refuse to stand up and proclaim anything that he hasn't gave me. A heart posture that we have to walk in. We don't need to be talking what he hasn't gave us. We need to be operating how he has called us to operate. So I slept in a little bit Friday because I'm on four tens. And I was like, I, 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 was, I was aggravated all day, Pastor, because I slept in a little bit. I was like, man, I wasted time just laying in. Laying there in, in bed, just, just sleeping in a little bit because I get up at 5 o'clock every morning. So, so I slept in just a little bit. Man, it bugged me. It bugged me bad. So yesterday I got up. I got up, I, I think it was around 6, something like that. And I started to lay back down. I was like, no, I was so bugged out yesterday, so mad because, because I had slept in. I said, I'm going to get on up. And whenever I got on up, he got to speaking. He got to speaking. Whenever I got on up, the light come on. Whenever I got on up, communication started. Whenever I got on up, something took place. Whenever it would have been a whole lot easier just to stay laid under the covers, it would have been a whole lot easier to been in a comfortable bed. But what happened whenever I got on up? If you can understand what I'm saying, whenever I got on up out of me being comfortable, out of my setting that I was in, whenever I got on up, God started speaking. Whenever we get in situations that ain't all about us and ain't all about our comfort, whenever we get on up, then God can start speaking to us. Whenever we get on up, then God can start pouring out His His Spirit upon us. Whenever we get on up, He can turn on His light. Whenever we get on up and come out to church on a Wednesday night, then God can turn on a light. Whenever we get out of our comfort zone and we come out here and we come together as a community that's linking arm, that's turning on our lots together God can do something you never know what how God's going to use you to what capacity he's going to use you but just as I said a while ago I've never been in a dark place so dark that just the smallest light you could see just the smallest light so you, you might say well well he didn't call me to preach well he may not have but if he saved you he called you to at least smile If he saved you, he called you to at least be kind. 
If He has saved you, He at least called you to lend a helping hand to somebody. If He saved you, He at least called you to be an encourager. It ain't got to be all about a big light, a spotlight all the time, but you can be in a place where the dimmest light needs to be shown. And if we do that... So the, the word that I'm reading this morning is going to start out in Isaiah chapter 60, and I'm going to read verse 1 through 5. And I'm reading from the Amplified. I don't know what they have on the screen, but I like the Amplified because, because I'm, I'm, I'm a, uh, a simple-minded type, type fella, and, and some of the these and thous, I can get lost in that. So, so I have to read on my level, Brent, where I can understand and I can take it in. I got a wore out King James Bible that I, that I read to, and, I, and I've always backed up to the King James Robert to make sure that nothing's going away from it because I've been in places to where, where it's King James only. And if you ain't got a King James, throw all the rest in the trash. But the way, I'm, the way I preach and the way I see, after God if God has called you and he saved you then you need to let God speak to you on the level to where you can hear because you can get caught up in man's religions and what man thinks about this thing to where you'll throw your Bible in the trash because you'll think that this is way more than what I can comprehend so I'm saying talk to a, talk to pastor talk to somebody that's got spiritual wisdom get you a Bible but start reading the Bible get you a Bible where you can get in the word where you can understand what the word is because I can't live on every single thing how Dale does it because Dale might be a little sharper than what I am I wasn't created to be Pastor Dale I wasn't created that way he wasn't created to be me he's got gifts that I don't have and I'm sure I got gifts that he don't have but if we come together and we unite the gifts what takes place the light comes on. And whenever the light comes on by us uniting together, what takes place? The, dark, the darkness is getting drowned out. We get so caught up in this life that so-and-so has got this and they can do this. Well, well, Heather, she can sing. I can't sing. That doesn't mean I'm not called. That doesn't mean I'm not called. What has God called you? How has He called you to turn on your light? Quit dictating your light off somebody else. Quit letting somebody else put a bushel over your light. Quit letting people hinder your walk. Quit being worried about what somebody's going to think that you don't turn on the light. We got to walk this thing out. Sister Doris had been, been doing in her own Wednesdays salt shakers and lanterns. It's been a good word. It's been a good word. Let me read. I encourage y'all to come to church on Wednesday. I encourage y'all to be in the word on Monday. I encourage y'all to be in the word and prayer on Tuesday. If we've ever lived in a world that needs some lights to come on, we live in it right now. So arise from spiritual depression to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory and brilliance of the Lord. For your light has come and the glory and brilliance of the Lord has risen up on you. I'm going to read that again. What you, what, what you all got up here? Arise, Jerusalem, let your light shine for all to see. For the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. That's good. Whenever I read this, Brent, and I read and it said, Arise from your spiritual depression to a new life, to a new life and shine. Be radiant with the glory and brilliance of the Lord, for your light has come. And you think, well, what, what, do you, what do you mean arise from spiritual depression? Are you still living how He called you to live? Are you still living with the love that you had whenever He come in and took all the sins away? Are you still walking in the newness of God that whenever He come and changed your life, whenever He come picked you up out of that horrible pit, are we still walking in that atmosphere? Are we still walking and letting our light shine? Or are we in some kind of spiritual depression to where, oh God, 
it's Sunday. I gotta go, I gotta go to church today. I can't wait to get there and get it over with. Are you living in that atmosphere? And I'm telling you, if you're living like that today, that only the reason you got to come here is to get a check on your back, you might as well not worry about that check because that check don't mean nothing. But if you're willing to get up and let your light shine and arise from spiritual depression to a new life, Whenever he saved me, something happened on the inside. I couldn't stay how I used to stay. I couldn't run the bars like I used to run them. I can't even grab any alcohol and drink it because I know what I used to be. I know the hell that I used to raise in this life because I wasn't fit for anything whenever I lived that life. So why would I want to mess around with it today? So because he delivered me out of abundance that had my hands hands bound down that I was not fit for the kingdom of God yes I believed in God I believed in God pastor whenever I was running around and, 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 and living, living the ways of the world I believed in God but I did not live God I was under bondage. I was under chains. I was under stuff that held me down but you know what I don't have to live that way now and neither does any of us we don't have to live that way. We can come together and Jimmy, everybody in here got a cell phone. Can you get it out of your pocket? Jimmy, can you get to a light switch? Everybody, please, everybody that's got one in here, hop it, pop it out. Turn on your flashlight. Turn off lights. I see lights shining, but I don't see everybody's. You can turn them back on. It might be because you don't have a phone in here. Your phone might be powered off. It might be because you didn't want to participate, but let me tell you something. We live in a world right now where he's called all of us to participate. He, from them little bitty ones right over there, He's called them to participate as much as whoever the oldest one is in here. He's called all of us. It might be on different levels, but He's called each and every one of us. My friends in here today, Thumper, he's sitting back there. Thumper can't see. But you know what? I'm astonished whenever I talk to Thumper because Thumper lives by himself and he can't see. You hear what I'm saying? He cooks and he can't see. He grows a garden and he can't see. He, play, he grows flowers and gives them away and he can't see. It took, and he hasn't always been that way. I remember whenever we used to cruise town together. So whenever the, the sight left, something had to take place. There had to be a will on the inside that I'm not going to die like this that I'm going to learn how to do this thing on my own because I don't want somebody having to cater to me all the time. He let a light come on on the inside of him. Whenever he got saved, I heard him testify Sunday night at a little church and he told of the good... We got a... Thumper, will you testify what God saved you from? Saved me from so much, brother. I was thinking about what you was going to say there. and Kind of got to thinking, brother, Tim's going to get me. So, you know, the Lord has, you know, I was a diabetic all my life, brother Tim. Praise God. And I got into smoking pot, got into eating pills, got into smoking crack cocaine, snorting crack cone, cocaine, and shooting that stuff up through a needle. Praise the Lord, brother Tim. You know that. But praise the Lord. I went into an old, old country church one night. Praise the Lord. The old, the old, I went there for an old kidney transplant to pray for that, Brother Tim. But you know what? As I, as I come into that church, praise God, I heard an old message my brother brother was preaching. It was the, the one lost lamb, Brother Billy. You might have been there. Praise God. But that night, Brother Tim, I knew who that lost lamb was. And it was this old boy right here. And praise God, I didn't get that old kidney transplant that night, but I did get a transplant. It was an old heart transplant. Praise God, the Lord looked at me. He's seen all the, the pills and stuff that I'd been eating, the stuff that I'd been through, Brother Tim. 
But he didn't care about all that. All he seen was me standing there and holding my hands out. Lord, would you save me? And praise God. Church, let me tell you, I don't care if you may be lost here, some of you tonight. But I want to tell you what, if you're here and you mean business with the Lord today, he'll be right here tonight where this morning with you. And he'll save you just like me. There ain't nobody that he can't reach. The Bible says his ear ain't too mute and his, Lord, his arms ain't too short that he can't reach you today. Praise God. I met a brother coming in, Brother Tim Marty. Me and him used to hang together in, in places. And I was so blessed to see that brother here this morning. I want to tell you, God can do it this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. So Thumper, Thumper plays drums and he still, and he preaches. Don't let the enemy try to throw a disability on you that you can't let your light shine. Don't let a word come to your mind that's, that you don't have to carry around. They could say that he couldn't do it, but God says that he can because in our weakness, that's what? That's when he is strong. So if I can come to you this morning and I can say anything, it's just as this word says, it says, Arise from spiritual depression to a new life. Shine, be radiant the glory and brilliance of the Lord for your light has come and the glory and brilliance of the Lord has risen upon you. For in fact the darkness will cover the earth and the deep darkness will cover the people. But the Lord will rise up on you, Jerusalem, and His glory and brilliance will be seen on you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes around you and see they all gather together. They come to you. Your sons will come from far away and your daughters will be looked after at their side then you will see and be radiant and your heart will tremble with joy and rejoice because the abundant wealth of the seas will be brought to you I don't know about you but I'm sure there's people in here this morning that needs your sons to come home that needs your daughters to come home whenever I got read this word pastor and it talks about how the nations will come to you can you imagine the darkness that's out there that's looking for just a little bit of light Light, just like you talked about the moth you know in the summertime you can turn on the light outside and everything gathers is because they're attracted around that light they want to come to the light in the middle of the darkness what if in the middle of, of, of the world out there we start turning on our light so that the ones that's lost is attracted to us so that they want to come because they say how can that man testify of what he used to be but now he gets to glorify God because there's a God in heaven that hung on a cross that came to save each and every one of us that he can take all of our failures he can take all of our shortcomings and he can change us because he has set us free and then those of you that got to hear my sister Addie sing last week you look and you say how can a 17 year old girl get up and glorify God that way whenever we live in a time to where 17 year olds I'm sure would rather do a lot more things Things. but there was something come on the inside of her there was a light there was something that she had so she wanted to glorify God so she lets her light shine if we get into the atmosphere of where I've got to be radiant I've got to let my light shine I've got to do this thing for God because he didn't leave me he left all the 99 to come after me. He didn't leave me in the middle of my mess. He didn't leave me in the middle of my addictions. He didn't leave me whenever the world gave up on me. He was right there. He was right there. So how could I not do what He wants me to do? If you look up radiant, radiant is rays, of, rays or reflecting, reflecting beams of light, vividly bright and shining. Mark, and this is from Webster's, marked by or expressive of love, confidence, or happiness, a radiant smile. Have you looked at somebody that's glowing? Most brides that's getting ready to get married, whenever you look at them, they're glowing. Most mamas, whenever they're carrying a baby on the inside of them, you can look at them and they're glowing because of the joy that they have on the inside, because what they're fixing to experience. Are we living a life to where we are being radiant? I preached at a little church there last Sunday night, and then we went out to eat afterwards. We was at Texas Roadhouse. And I've went there with, with some folks from that church several times on Sunday evenings. 
And this waitress come up. She was probably about that tall. And she come up and she said, she said, I hope that one Sunday night that, that, I'll, that I'll get to wait on you all. The next part's devastating. She said, because all the waitresses talk about how good you all are and how nice you are and how good you tip. She said, most of us hate coming here on Sunday because after church, them people is so mean and they're so stingy and they don't want to give. So what, what kind of lot is that? Are, are, we, are, we, are, we, are we putting on that jacket? Are we putting on that jacket whenever we leave the church? Are we going into the world with that jacket on that I'm stingy, that I'm hateful, that I'm an old sire puss? Or are we putting on a jacket of love? Are we grabbing up our light, no matter what it may look like, and are we turning it on so that we may so surely shine for Jesus? Are we doing that? Or are we turning it off and we, 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 we just blending in with the darkness and we're just looking like everybody else? Or are we turning on our light? Are we doing that? Come up here with me, Pastor. What are you squinting for, Destiny? Wait, what, what's the front row? What are y'all doing? It's bright. I want to shine. I, I, wanna, I want them to be like, golly. He's been in the atmosphere of heaven. Whenever I get around, I, I can't see nothing but the light. And this is just with one. It's even brighter whenever two come together. And I wish this thing was as long as a board and we could all come up here and we could get together and we could blind everybody that's in the seats. I wish that's what we could do, but it ain't. But I think you all understand where I'm going with this. If you go on into Webster's and you look down, it says choose the right synonym and I'll mess all this up because I'm no, no teacher by no means. I'm not a Miss Doris. Barely made it through high school, but I've been called. But I've been called. I know, I know what God put on the inside of me whenever he saved me. That's what matters. So he helps me along the way. If you use the right synonym for radiant, it's bright, brilliant, radiant, luminous, lustrous, means shining or glowing with light. Bright implies emitting or reflecting a high degree of light. Brilliant it implies implies intense, often sparkling brightness. Radiant stresses the emission or seems emission of rays of light. Luminous implies emissions of steady glowing light by reflecting or surrounding darkness. Lustrous means stressing, stresses an even rich light from a surface that reflects brightly without glittering. How is our light being represented? There's a little board back there next to Jimmy and them. It's a, it's a light board that, 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 that was in here. And they could, they could do things with these lights in here that would blow our mind. But you know what? They know how to turn them on. They know how to change the colors. Do you know anything else to do with them? That's about it. They know how to turn them on. And they know how to change their colors. Whenever he saves us, he teaches us how to turn the light on. But if we want that, I, I heard that that's like a really high dollar system. I, I mean like, like, I'm talking about thousands high dollar system. But did you hear what I said? They know how to turn them on. They can change the color. They can do two steps to probably a $10,000 system. I think that's the word that I heard. If that's worth 10000 what are you worth? If that's worth 10000 what are you worth? But there's a manual somewhere that will teach whoever's interested in, in, in doing that how to do all kinds of things to sync those lights with Christmas plays, 
to sync them with holidays. I'm sure, I'm, and I'm just talking, but to sync together to do what that board is created to do. There's an instruction manual how you can represent Jesus well, how you can turn on your light, how you can be a light in a dark world. Because as a lot of people get caught up, as I said, on the, on the whether you're doing trunk or treat or you're, you're doing it this way or you're doing it that way, I've read in here that the darkness doesn't have to overtake me. So wherever I'm at, there's going to be a light. So send all the kids from the community to Rio East Church on Wednesday night because we're going to light up the night. We're going to represent Jesus well. Send them all here. And let everybody that's going and coming say, can you believe that church did a trunk or treat? Yeah, we're going to do one and we're going to shine for Jesus while we're doing it. Because we're going to represent Jesus well. Because most of the time, if the kids ain't coming to where the light is, there's parents out there that's going to send them to all other places where the darkness can be. So uh, Cassie, I would rather them come here. And I hope that you're going to be there and with that healing that you got on your hands because you've been praying and you've been seeking after God to use you in mighty ways. So I pray that every kid that comes up to you, that you glorify the Father because you do what you're called to do and you let the power of God come through your hands because your light is so surely going to shine you hear what I'm saying he has called each and every one of us she knows what her calling is she knows what has been spoken into her ear forgive me for picking on you Cassie but whenever somebody's been called they need to be encouraged to use it and what I want to say by that you know I, she came out to my to my father-in-law whenever he was in the nursing home and she came in and she anointed and she prayed and she didn't even know him. She let her light so surely shine. We live in a world, please church, let your light so surely shine. Daniel 12 and 3 says, Those are spiritually wise will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven. And those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and ever. I want to shine like the stars. I want to shine as bright as I can possibly shine. We got things going on in the month of in the month of November. We've got revival coming on. We sat down the other day with Amber and Jamie and, and Ronnie and Caroline and the youth was planning out things to, to do, not only fun things, but things to do to go serve. We got a thing coming for the young adults where they're gonna do a friends giving. I don't know exactly what the gap's got in store, but your age is thirty to fifty five. Is that right? Other than that, they got the Sam's Club. There's not a thing going on in this church that's not out there to where you can captivate and you can reach each and every age group that's in here. But what we've got to do is start letting our light shine and we've got to come together as a community that we're going to do this thing and we're going to do it together and we're going to do it in unity and we're going to figure out how we can go get those that's out in the darkness and we can bring the light to them we, we can't just expect them to come in here all the time sometimes we got to take the light into the world are we doing it on Monday morning are we doing it whenever we get gas or are we fussing and gropping and complaining help me Jesus Help me, Jesus. They see. They see. They hear. What if, what if the waitress or waiter is on the edge, and they got they got a they got a knife or pistol at home? What if they're on the edge, and I ain't going to get graphic? We got kids in here. You know, you, you all are grown up. You know what I'm saying. We live in a world full of that that's on the edge. And they think, well, what if I could get to somebody that talks about how they know Jesus? And then they come into a table on Sunday morning, Brent, after church, and you and Heather sitting there, 
and you're grouped up with Keith and Patty, and all they hear every time they bring your drink, every time they bring your salad, every time they bring your food, all they hear is the complaining and gropping of how you hated where you just come from. Then the hope that they thought that they found in Jesus because I'm going to go give it a try. Well, why would I want to be like that? Why would I want to be like that? We wake up every day with a decision of how we're going to live our life. And dark times come and hurtful times come and sorrowful times come and not fun times come. That's part of life. But you get to dictate how you're going to live it that day. And I promise you, you, if you will wake up with prayer and you will get in the Word and you will read, God will help you th no matter what time comes, no matter what situation you're in. And then if He's called us to be a light, don't even sit amongst the table because that stink in the nostrils of God of all that griping and fussing and hating and communicating together, lying on one another and all that, that, that ain't living a Christ-like. What is a Christian? It's Christ-like, right? What kind of Savior would he be, Pastor, if we heard him talking about Miss Teresa? What kind of Savior would he be? This is for all of us to live this thing. It's not for Him to be holy and me live like hell. That ain't how it is. We go through life and we will make mistakes and there will there'll be things that trip us up and we fall, but you dust yourself off and you ask God to forgive you and help me let my light shine. Don't let me put somebody more in a place of darkness. Second Corinthians 3, 17 and 18 says, Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liber liberty. Emancipation from bondage, true freedom. And we all, with unveiled faces, continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are progressively being transformed into His image from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. When we allow Him to transform us, when we allow Him to take us to another level, we go from glory to glory. Whenever we get past that area that we, we was getting tripped in, whenever we learn that we don't have to fall for that temptation every time because it's hindering your light, it's, it's putting something over your light. Whenever we learn that we can get past that because God will not let anything overtake us, then we will learn to go from glory to glory. And whenever we go from glory to glory, our light gets brighter and it gets brighter because we are shining for Him. We're doing what He's called us to do. I want you all to look at Miss Renita. We've excused our way out of church because of a baby crying. Let them cry, let them holler. If a preacher cannot get up and preach under the anointing of God without distraction from a kid, check and see if you're called. Check and see if you're called. We've got to let our light shine no matter the circumstance. I'm not trying to be mean or ugly, but, but don't let that hinder you from going to church and don't let that hinder you from doing what God called you to do because where He's called us, He will make a way for you to shine. He will make a way for you to shine. Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. I'm going to skip the other one that I gave you all. And this will be the last of it. And this is Paul that wrote this. And Paul was one of the worst of the worst. So with that, and praise team, if y'all want to come on up. Paul was one of the worst of the worst. So with that being said, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. He raised people up. He done a lot of mighty things, and he was the worst of the worst. 
Don't let something hold you down by saying, I'm not good enough. Let your light shine. For this reason, grasping the greatness of this plan by which Jews and Gentiles are joined together in Christ, I bow my knees in reverence before the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives in the name of God, the first and ultimate Father. May He grant you out of the riches of His glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through His Spirit in your inner self, indwelling in your innermost being and personally, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith, and may you have been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love, be full of it fully capable and comprehending with all the saints, God's people, the width and the length and the height and the depth of His love, fully experiencing that amazing endless love and that you may come to know practically through personal experience the love of Christ which surpasses mere knowledge without experience that you may be filled up through your being to all the fullness of God so that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your lives completely filled and flooded with God Himself now to Him who is able to carry out His purpose and do super abundantly more than all that we dare to ask or think beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, and dreams, according to His power that is at work within us, to Him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and forever. Amen. That does not say that anybody is disqualified. None. As a matter of fact, that right there should spiritually charge you to want to step into an atmosphere that will do all, more than what I could even think of or ask. We've let things, and I'm just as guilty as everybody else, we've let things limit us in our walk. It says in that word there's higher heights and there's deeper depths and lengths. I want to I get in each and every one of them, Addie. From your birthplace down there where where the power fell. You know, I, I want to be in that all the time. I don't want to have to go to a place for that to happen. I want heaven to invade my atmosphere every time my eyes open. And I want hell to tremble. I want hell to tremble because I woke up. He's called us to be a light, to so surely shine. And if there's something this morning as they get ready to sing that's hindering your light, let's pray about it. Let's get to that place to where we are attractive. Not attracted to me, but attracted to what I carry. Not attracted to you, but attractive to what you carry. Preached last week on a river flowing out of us river of God if you've got a river flowing and you've got light shining why would they not want to be around you if you're providing the fresh water of the spirit and the light of the son of God why would they not want to be around you whenever we get into that atmosphere that, 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 that we like being around one another and I just don't want to see you on Sunday morning I don't want to just be around you because it's a time that we come in here. But I know that you're going to let your light shine that helps me gather life. Whenever we become a community together, we will reach the community. But it starts in these walls. And we can go take back everything that the enemy has tried to destroy in each and every one of our families. So if you need something from God, I'm done. He shut me up. Love y'all. Here is where I lay it down Every burden, every crown This is my
do whatever you want to, oh, and I will make room for you.
Take